Hi friends, Will Davis Jr. here with good news today. It is great to see you. Thanks for joining in. Please send all cards, comments, complaints, questions, criticisms, and cash to seniorpastor at acfellowship.org. Okay, we've got five more. We've got two today and Friday and then three more devotionals next week and we're done till September. So stay with me. Okay, we're going to get into the meat now of this Genesis 2 passage. Genesis 2, 4 says, These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Okay, there's a lot here. Um, remember, this is probably what should be the beginning if there are chapters of chapter 2 because this first section is um, identified by ending with a new beginning in verse 4 of this phrase, the generations. That's where Moses says, I'm beginning a new section. It's the first of 10 times he does that. Also, I want you to notice that in this, throughout Genesis 1, it's heavens and earth, heavens and earth, heavens and earth. Here in Genesis 2, 4, he starts off heavens and earth, then he switches. The day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. There's two things I want you to notice about that. First, that he switches the order, earth and heavens. First time the earth has come first, and then he adds a name for God. This is the first plural uh, hyphenated expression for God we have in the scriptures, the Lord God. It's been God all the way through. And now we have this plural, Lord God, not plural um, hyphenated, Lord God, for the first time in scripture, which all this designates a new section, a new emphasis. And that little subtle putting of the earth first is telling. Because now this perspective, instead of being from the grandiose view of God of the heavens, this is going to be a very much heliocentered, earth-centered view of creation, specifically man-centered view of creation as we get to Adam and Eve and their account. So Moses is shifting gears. He's given us the God standpoint of creation. Now he's giving us the man standpoint of creation. What I really want you to focus on, and I'll talk about this today and tomorrow, is that name, the Lord God. It's the first hyphenated name of God in Scripture. Okay, In, chapter, in the first chapter, in the first creation account, which ends in chapter 2, verse 3, the first creation account goes from 1 1 to 2 3. One name is used for God. It's the name Elohim. And I introduced it to you way back as we began to discuss Genesis 1 1. Elohim. One of the common names for gods, pagan gods, false gods, statue gods in the Bible is El. Elohim is the plural of that in Hebrew, and it's used. Uh, 2,700 times for God in the Bible, but Elohim, although it's plural, is always used with a singular verb to designate this is a God whose majesty, whose trinity, doing these works. It's got a singular verb to designate him from pagan gods. Moses uses Elohim 35 times in the first creation account, 1-1 one, one to 2-3. Okay? 35 times, which is, a, which is a multiple of seven, by the way. That's all by design. But now in 2.4, we have a completely different or additional name for God. It's the Lord God. Okay? In front of Elohim, Moses inserts the word, inserts the word Yahweh. Okay? Let me spell it in English for you. It's Y-A-H-W-E-H. Perhaps you've heard it. Yahweh. This is a different name for God. And it's a very sacred name for God. And in this hyphenated name for God, the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, Elohim, is used just here in the first couple chapters of Genesis and only once in Exodus, and it's not used the rest of the time in the Bible. So it has a very unique place in Scripture and specifically in these creation accounts. So Yahweh, you guys still with me? A lot to think about here early in the morning. Yahweh um, comes from the Hebrew be verb, to be, to exist, okay, to self-exist. It is, the, it is connected to the, the name that when Moses said in Exodus chapter 3, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? Who should I say sent me? And Moses, God answers to Moses, I am that I am. Well, that's the derivation of Yahweh, Yahweh. I am, I exist, I'm the self-existent one. So the name Yahweh is representative of um, God's nature. God's all-powerful God's self-existent, non-dependent nature, which is why it's translated Lord. He is the Lord. He is also God. So Moses introduces us to another view of God here in this, in this chapter, the second account of creation. 
In chapter 1, he's Elohim. He's the all-powerful, creating God of the universe that spans everything. Now he's also Yahweh, the, the self-existent God. And that's the name of God that's most intimate to Israel and thus to us. And I'll get to that tomorrow. Isn't that interesting? Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us about Yahweh and Elohim. Thank you for being Yahweh and Elohim. We're learning so much. We praise you for this. We pray, bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.